Hey guys, welcome to the video. Today I'm just doing something a little bit different for this channel and it is a Yu-Gi-Oh! Legendary Collection 25th Anniversary Edition unboxing. Now, my brother got me this for my birthday and it's a pretty good birthday gift for me because it's something that I appreciate but wouldn't have bought myself and there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, first of all being that, you know, it's just not as cool as the original Legendary Collections, the fact that it doesn't come in the binder. Uh, granted, this is much better for the environment, I'm sure, but, you know, it's a lot less fun. And the other reason is basically just that the reprint sets are in the modern card templates. I mean, I know that's a bit of a nitpicky problem, but considering this entire product and the reprint boxes are just pure nostalgia... You know, there is not a lot of nostalgia in these original cards being in the modern um, the modern card types. But yeah, you know, I think it's still a pretty cool product. And actually, the box it comes in is a lot better than, uh, you know, you might expect. I guess if you move past the idea of seeing like 500 of these on the table at locals that have just been discarded, you know, it is quite a nice box. The Legendary Collection wasn't ever really as good as the original Master Collection in that, you know, you got the cover art promo from each pack in the Master Collections, but we still get the six original packs. We get an Invasion of Chaos instead of a Labyrinth of Nightmare as the original Master Collection had... Uh, I'm not sure about the original Legendary Collection and whether that had Dark Crisis and Invasion of Chaos. But anyway, uh, we obviously get the three uh, God cards in their original forms and the stone artworks of Blue Eyes, Dark Magician and Red Eyes. Honestly, at one time, these were my favourite artworks of all three, but I'm kind of past seeing them now. And we also get one of those six cards as a quarter century rare, which we can assume will hopefully be worth something one day if the rest aren't now i don't know which i would want because honestly there's none of these i would want without having all three and there's not really any of these i would want without having all three but i guess maybe if i was only going to get one maybe blue eyes of the gods obelisk is my favorite so i guess with that and in terms of the main packs i'm just hoping to see some really cool stuff now as i say i i do actually want to collect at least lob as a set and there's not a lot of stuff i'm missing from that however i would like the originals so that doesn't really matter that being said It'd be quite cool to see blue eyes because I don't have an LOB blue eyes. Other than that, anything that might actually still be usable, like a Raigeki, anything like that. Metal Raiders, um, it's definitely Black Skull Dragon in that one that I would be wanting. Um, Spell Ruler, I'm not really sure. Pharaoh Servant, I actually do need to get a Thousand Eyes Restrict, but I would also love a Secret Raid Jinzo. Dark Crisis... The only thing I know of in there is Exodia Necros, and Invasion of Chaos obviously has a load of really good stuff in it. But we are setting our sights really high here, considering that, you know, these aren't even guaranteed hollows. You know, is the original pull rate with rares, etc. And to be honest, when my brother got one of these, he got Pot of Greed, I think, which was pretty cool. And I think he got an ultra rare Horn of Heaven, but that was literally it. So we won't set our hopes too high, but that's the kind of stuff we're shooting for. And there are some legitimately good reprints in here, whether it's for, uh, you know, whether it's for like goat format or just random stuff like Raigeki's not bad. And uh, really random stuff like uh, ultra rare Toon Mermaid. You know, that's pretty cool if uh, someone, you know, still thinks Toons are worth playing after Toon Kingdom came out, I think they became very boring when Toon Kingdom came out, but uh, I digress. Okay, so apparently I can't get into this tiny bit of foil with my fingers, so I guess we will uh, we'll cut that open. I know my brother would want me to, would want to know what I got in this as soon as possible, so I thought we'd just go ahead and open this. To be honest, I'm surprised he hasn't been pestering me about it already, to be honest. But yeah, okay. So let's see what we're looking at inside. I mean, most of that box is just cardboard insert. So, I mean, you know, it doesn't feel like we necessarily need a box this big. Still feels like we're wasting packaging. You can see our quarter of the century rare peeking out there, but not really any tell on what it is yet. So let's find out. Oh, well, I guess there's the answer. <laughs> So, I mean, actually, to be fair, you know, 
it's not the, the 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 modern text box isn't the worst thing in the world and to be honest these these gods still look pretty nice like that that's that that's all pretty nice um we got blue eyes dark magician red eyes and of course the winged dragon of Ra as the quarter of century rare that's pretty cool i would argue it's probably you know it's probably everyone's in fact i actually thought um i think i actually predicted i might get this because i remember thinking you know it's probably the one that has the most chance of becoming expensive at least out of the god cards obviously um blue eyes and dark magician could also end up being worth something but yeah so we got the winged dragon of ra as our first piece and now we are going to go through the packs as every right thinking person should in chronological order and the packs don't even like really they don't even have the same feel to them really like i feel like the blue isn't quite right i don't know it's been a very long time since i opened any lob now i actually had really good pull rates with this when i was a kid i got red eyes from this i got a uh, dark magician that was actually the first like decent rare card i ever pulled uh was dark magician and uh, yeah i got red eyes got loads of other stuff to this day i have gaia as well and i have a couple of trihorn dragons uh, that being said, I do love Trihorn Dragon, so it would be cool to see him again. So let's get into this, because it's seven minutes in, and we haven't even looked at a pack yet. So Forrest, the, the artwork looks really clean there. Petite Angel. We've got Legendary Sword. we got Hitotsumi Giant. And Dragoness the Wicked Knight is our rare... Oh! And a super rare Swords of Revealing Light. Okay, I didn't expect that. I, I didn't realise that you got a rare and a hollow you know if you got a hollow i actually did get this as well when i was a kid on holiday i remember swords of revealing light i think i traded that after i started going to locals um and then replaced it with a retro pack one we got root water furious seeking and vile germs so i guess maybe we could try the pokemon three from the back method um but we i mean that's a pretty good start you know that's better than getting absolutely nothing I probably would have rather had any of the other supers, uh, but you know it's 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 better than nothing. Like I said, we aren't going to be uh, with salty with whatever we get here. Anything good is just a bonus. So yeah. So, so anything good's a bonus, and we start off with a Steel Scorpion. I mean, Steel Scorpion wasn't the worst card at the time. Rainbow Flower, Illusionist, Faceless Mage. Hasn't been errated to be an illusion yet. Tongyo. Mystic Lamp. Lego. Now this was short print. So I'm going to assume that it's short print again. So that's not a bad pull, you know. And a fake trap. Oh, Twin Headed Thunder Dragon. That's really nice. I don't have one of these. That's really, really nice. And if you're going back to kind of OG stuff, I guess that one was far off the back because we got a baby dragon in there as well. But if you were playing OG stuff, then Twin-Headed Thunder Dragon, that would be a really good pull. And uh, now that I've had two of them, I do feel like if every pack had like the rare and super in it, um, then that would have made these products a lot more interesting. However, it would have very much uh, lowered the value of uh, obviously the original the original well not the originals because the originals would still be the originals but like you know these would be very valueless very quickly and as we move into spell ruler we've seen two super rares in the first two packs and my question is have we used up all the luck in this video we're still going to just put three to the front and we've got mechanical snail we've got chain energy you know this wasn't a bad card uh red archery girl had a a huge crush on her back in the day. Gravekeeper's Servant. Again, not a bad card. We've got Chorus of Sanctuary. There's a ritual monster coming. Hungry Burger. Not bad. His second reprint in one year. Hungry Burger, man. Like, that's just... I mean, have they arrived this text to be longer? Uh, I mean, that's like... What? I'm sure that never used to be that long. But that's that's really cool. We're going to put him out there. We've got Boar Soldier. Uh, even as a kid, I hated this card. Like, I just I didn't like the idea of losing your attack points. We've got Mother Grizzly. That's very interesting. And Horn of Light is the last one there. 
So no super rare there. But, uh, you know, that's okay. I think Spell Ruler was my favourite pack when I was a kid, but maybe that was just because it was green. I don't really know. Uh, Pharaoh's Servant, I would say, potentially has the most interesting stuff in it, apart from Invasion of Chaos, which is just obviously far and away the best set um, that we have here that we're working with. So, let's just stick with three at the front. Kaisi Tai, not bad. Again, this is, was not a bad card, especially if you played against Tear on World Championship 2004. Like, she was the, the most annoying bitch. Okay, we got Insect Imitation. Not a bad card now. I mean, it's not a great card. I'm surprised it hasn't had a retrain, to be honest, but yeah. Burning Land was always a garbage card. But at least it's now been, like, reworded so that it says Field Spell Cards, you know. Darkfire Soldier number two. I used to love those guys. Oni Tank T34. Really, really cool. R.I.P. Chicken Game. Minor Goblin Official. I used to use this in my deck when I was a kid. I'm not really sure why, because the entire idea of my deck was that I would lose to my brother. So I don't know why I would play something that, uh, you know, requires him to have 3,000 or less life points. But I guess I thought it was good. Invitation to a Dark Sleep. I always really liked this guy's artwork. And uh, it, it wasn't a terrible card, but the tribute kind of ruined it. We got Light Force Sword. Not bad. I, I think I got one of these on the same holiday I got the Swords of Revealing Light. And I definitely got two copies of Wing Weaver. I remember that. And Ground Collapse is the last card there. So yeah, I think we might have used up all of the uh, all of the luck straight away with the Swords and the Twin-Headed and the Hungry Burger. But as we go into Dark Crisis, I start to waffle on about a Yu-Gi-Oh! opening series that me and my friend Tom used to do. Uh, we had like a themed monthly pack opening. Uh, I bought them all. It was when it was basically my way of celebrating when I started getting student loans. Um, we started with Cyberdark Septem uh, September. Then did a Hidden Arsenal six booster box, which was called Omega October. I can't remember what we did in November, but then we did Dark, Dark Crisis December. Uh, we did four packs of this from deckboosters.com. Because, uh, you know, I couldn't think of much else to do. I hope I've not just bent that as he was coming out of the pack. Where it's not exactly the most uh, expensive card in the world, is it? Basically, this opening series, it was really cool. We had some really good moments in it. Like, uh, you know, from the Omega box, we pulled Die Gusto Phoenix, which was the price of half the box. Because uh, it was only like a £26 box. And then in the last pack, we got a second one. But unfortunately, he didn't keep uh, files of the videos. And I always meant to download them and re-upload them. And eventually he lost the channel, so we lost all of it. But yeah, anyway, I think in that, in four packs, we've got two super rares. So maybe we've used all of the luck uh, for this anyway. But yeah, Sasuke Samurai 2, not bad. That was a good card back in the day. Gravity X Growl. Twin Swords of Flashing Light Trice. What's this? The Guardian deck's making itself. We've got Dark Scorpion Gorgla Strong, bent on both corners. Uh, Sakuretsu Armor, you know... <laughs> We all remember you, boy. We all love uh, Sakuretsu Armor. Arsenal Summoner. The Guardian deck is building itself. We've got Chick the Yellow. Oh, maybe we should make Dark Scorpions instead. Our rare is Different Dimension Gate. I really liked the artwork of this when I was a kid. I really did. And non spellcasting area is the last card there. Yep. I think we've used up all of our luck here, but if there's anything that we get that we would want one final hollow hit on, it's probably an invasion of chaos. As long as it's not Chaos Rider Gustav, because I'm pretty sure that's the only only hollow I ever got from this set. Two Chaos Rider Gustavs in like my first two packs of this set. Obviously, there's so much really cool stuff in here. Chaos Rider Gustav would kind of suck. So we got Tower of Babel. Or Babel, depending on your philosophical bent. Blazing Apache, that was a good card back in the day. Thunder Crash, that was side deck relevant at one time. Chaos Sorcerer, a brilliant common. Like, how is this a common in its first print, you know? It's just crazy. Skull Mark Ladybug. Zero Gravity. Not a bad card, not a bad card. Pinch Hopper. Would have been good if Insects were better. Robin Zombie as the rare... And do we have one final hollow? No, we have a Sacred Crane. Again, not a bad card, but a bit of a flat ending. Sacred Crane has had his moments, but, you know, wasn't the most interesting thing to see there. And there we go. That is the end of our Legendary Collection 25th 
anniversary box opening. We got the quarter of the century Winged Dragon of Ra. We've got the Super Rare Swords of Revealing Light, the Twin Ended Thunder Dragon, really, really cool, and a Hungry Burger, of course. And uh, that just about covers it. So if you enjoyed this video, please do like, comment, and subscribe, and check out my other Yu Gi Oh! content in the end screen. Thank you guys for watching, and goodbye.